Magnus and Team Harvey. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome today's home team, Team Adidas. Your coaching staff, assistant coach Carolina Urban, and head coach Matt Littner. And now, here's your starting lineup for the Team Adidas. Starting goal, number 35, Maddie Rooney. On defense, number three, Jocelyn LaRock. Number 14, Renita Fast. Number seven, Laura Stacy. Number 20, Sarah Nurse. And number 28, Amanda Castle. And now fans, let's read tonight's starting lineup for the Harvey's team. Assistant coach Alexandre Trembley and head coach Corey Sheffrey. Starting goal number 35 and Renee Debian. On defense, number two, Lee Steckline. Number eight, Laura Fortino. On four, number nine, Jesse Eldridge. Number 26, Emily Clark. And number 29, Marie Philippe Poulin. For more than 15,000 years, the First Nation walked upon and cared for the lands we now call home. Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Ojibwe, and many others who were families, friends, and communities the way we are today. The town of Collingwood acknowledges the Lake Simcoe Nottawasaga Treaty of 1818 and the relationship it establishes with the original inhabitants of Turtle Island. We acknowledge the reality of our short shared history and the current contributions of indigenous people within our community. We seek to continue empowering expressions of pride amongst all of the diverse stakeholders in this area. We seek to do better and to continue to recognize, learn, and grow in friendship and community, nation to nation. The Collingwood Lightning and the PWHPA, together with the Collingwood Optimist Club, are proud to present a donation to My Friend's House as a part of the Lightning's annual Hockey for Hope fundraiser. Please welcome the following represent representatives for our check presentation and to take part in the ceremonial puck drop. From the Collingwood Lightning, Caitlin McDonald. From the Optimist Club, John Reedy. And Dave Hearn. From the PWHPA, Jaina Heffer. From my friend's house, Allison Fitzgerald and Clara O'Connell. From the Collingwood Blues, Dave Steele. And Scotty, the Scotiabank mascot. If we could have the captains from both teams join the representatives at center ice for tonight's ceremonial puck drop. Now fans, we ask that you please rise, if able, and remove your hats and join Kara Knight in the singing of Star Spangled Banner and O Canada.
twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs burst singing in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled Welcome back inside the Eddie Bush Memorial Arena. It feels like just a few minutes ago we were here and I just flew in 36 hours ago and I'm already on my way to the airport in a few short hours, but we're at the final game of the Collingwood Showcase. It's Izzy Germain and Liz Knox. Yeah, it's been quite a whirlwind of the weekend. Excited to see these two teams take to the ice, number one and number two in the standings right now. They're sure to give us a good show. So obviously with the win yesterday, Team Harvey still holding on to that first place spot with 24 points. Team Adidas though, they are in tough today. They are down, to, they are holding on to their 16 point second place uh, standing, but with two wins this weekend, Team Scotiabank is now inching that much closer. They're only one point away from taking that second spot away. So a big win for Team Adidas would make a huge difference in the standings for them. Yeah, Scotiabank is definitely putting the pressure on Team Adidas right now. As I kind of alluded to on the podcast, you have four teams. So logic would tell you maybe a 1-4 duel and then a 2-3, but we'll see how playoffs roll out. Regardless, you don't want to be falling into a spot where you potentially play this dominant Team Harvey's in the first game. Well, and we are almost ready to go here in Collingwood for this game. Obviously, the storyline yesterday, we try to avoid talking about her. But <laughs> one of the reasons why you don't want to play Team Harvey's in the championship game would be number 29, Marie-Philippe Poulain. Yeah, Captain Clutch. And uh, the words were rolling off my tongue as I was watching the game yesterday that who just seems to find a way to put the puck in the net when her team needs it. And in no less than seconds after it came out of my mouth, sure enough, she potted the game winner for Team Harvey's yesterday during the day. If you're just joining us, Team Sonnet fell to Team Scotiabank in our morning game, 6-1. to one. So the issues for Team Sonnet continue as they are now winless in the last six. Now Jesse Eldridge, somewhat of a hometown girl this weekend, is from Barrie, Ontario. Gets the puck inside the Harvey's, or sorry, the Adidas zone. Poulet on the chase and Ratchet right now putting pressure on Sarah Nurse. She gives that away to Haley Skamura. Skamura with a shot, rebound, still loose. And we'll get to the goaltender shortly, but that's Maddie Rooney's first look at the puck. Now Jamie Lee Ratchet. 
Over to Kristen Richards, her shot blocked in front by Jocelyn LaRock. We'll say that name a ton. Puts up some big minutes on the blue line for Team Adidas. Skamura, down low to Shaver. What a shot Sophia Shaver had to get Harvey's first goal of the game yesterday. Shaver down low, trying to cycle it. Nursey will pick it up. Now Renata Fast, with time, goes to Jocelyn LaRock. And they'll clear it out. They'll go for their first change of the game. Let's get to the goaltenders as we'll get our first icing call of the game. Number 35 in net for Team Adidas. Yeah, there's no shortage of good goaltending in the PWHPA. And these two are no ex exception. Maddie Rooney, of course, coming off Rivalry Series. She's seen these players. She knows them inside out. She's looking to put up a big game for Team Adidas. And on the other end, you've got number 35. And Renee Day Bannon, she's rocking a new bucket today, which I haven't had a chance <laughs> I know, to I know, I didn't I couldn't recognize at. her from there. Yeah, she's got the white cat eyes, which I love to see. Great visibility for the goaltender. And I've heard that she's got it's a beautiful thing engraved or written <laughs> on the side of that one. So really leading into the burger bunch. You know, this team has formed their identity. They certainly work hard and they have their fun as well. So the two thirty-fives going at it. And Trying to narrow the gap for first place in the PWHPA standings. Team Adidas sends it down. It's going to be another icing call. They won't get the change they need and will reset in front of Maddie Rooney. One thing we should mention, our equipment supplier this year, team or, uh, well, team CCM Hockey, and providing the goaltenders with some wicked gear. You see Maddie Rooney's set up there. I love the Team Adidas colors in the navy and, and neon yellow, but obviously some of the athletes not sponsored by CCM also getting a good get up like Anne Renee Dubien. Yeah, and I wish this wasn't a big of a story as it is, but a lot of these goaltenders post-college don't have their equipment provided to them unless they're signed as individual athletes with these companies. So CCM stepped up huge for the PWHPA this year. They came in knowing that they were gonna be competitive and putting these players in the best gear on the market. Jesse Eldridge, a big hit on Sarah Nurse below the goal line. They both get up. And definitely an important piece to have the top equipment for the top players in the world. Adidas struggling to get out of their zone. Potomac now finally inside the Harvey zone. The puck will be taken away by Poulet. Now to Clark. Clark all alone will send it in deep as she'll chase it down. Maddie Rooney will touch up to Jinsey Dunn. Should mention uh, Jinsey's sister, a bronze medalist with the U18 World Championships, Team USA. Yes. And a captain of that team as well. Yeah, Joy Dunn coming home with the bronze medal. A position that Jinsey was in not too long ago, so I'm sure we'll be hearing more of that name coming up through the ranks after she's done university. We'll get a face-off violation warning for Team Harvey's. That's a new rule for this year. They're not getting kicked out of the center circle anymore. They're just getting a warning. On the second warning, they do get a face-off violation penalty. Team Adidas now inside the zone. Kristen O'Neill back to the point for Mickelson. That pass a little hot, but she's able to keep it inside. It does squeak out, though, as Jamie Lee Rattray gets a stick on it. We go off for the change, and now... O'Neill backhands it over to Willoughby. Can't get through the D. Savannah Harmon, the first star of the game yesterday for Harvey's. Larson makes a diving play. Can't keep it in. Richards will send it deep. Skimmer on the chase. Now Grimmins, that puck a little too hot along the boards. Krasania can't handle that. Rattray now with a shot, hits the post. Through the legs of Mickelson. Screening Rudy. And we get our first post of the game. Skamurna along the boards, back to Richards at the point. Finds Harmon on the far side. Savannah Harmon rims it down low to Rattray. Rattray battling with Krasaniak. And Skamur with a shot blocker save by Rooney. A great save there by Rooney. Finding that puck through traffic as we see that icing call evaded by just barely touching Anne Renee Debian on the post there. She tried hard to avoid it, but a lucky break for Team Adidas. Here comes Laura Stacy. Laura Stacy 
Along the boards, back to the point. Fast, quick to rock. Her shot blocked, and we're going to get a penalty. I believe it's going to be on Sarah Nurse as she runs into Anne Renee Debien. And we'll wait for the call. And it is goaltender interference against number 20. And she'll sit for two, and we'll get our first look at the Harvey's power play. Sarah Nurse with just maybe a little bit of tunnel vision there. She's got her eyes on the puck in the corner. We might catch a look at it here, but she just skates right through that blue ice and clips Anne Renee Debian as she does so. So she'll sit for two or less on Team Adidas, and maybe this will help Adidas kind of get those legs going. Great chance there you saw by Jamie Lee Rattray off the far post. Well, here's a short-handed opportunity for Jillian Sonier. Good back check by Rattray as she gets a stick on that puck. Sonier still battling. Puck will be kept inside the zone below the goal line. Rattray now to Poulet. Poulet back to Rattray on the near side. She'll rim it around, find Poulet on the far side. To Eldridge, back to the point for Harmon. Savannah Harmon with the shot, no one in front. Maddie Rooney makes the easy save. A good look from Savannah Harmon. I'm a big fan of floating pucks towards the net and giving players a chance to either whack it down, deflect it, or have the goalie juggle it a little bit. That one maybe a couple inches too high. Maddie Rooney is able to just suck it up. And we've got a minute and a half left in this penalty kill for Team Adidas. Potomac versus Skimmer, and that puck just squeaks out of the zone. They'll have to regroup in the neutral zone. Steck line. Patiently waiting, and they'll break out with Laura Fortino. Mentioned yesterday, it, the defense putting up some big minutes in the PWHPA. There's top line in almost every team sees roughly 24 minutes a game. And Lee Steckline and Laura Fortino, that top pair for Team Harvey's. As Laura Stacy clears that puck out for Team Adidas. And we were speaking with Erin Ambrose before the game. She's out due to injury right now, a member of Team Sonnet. And she was saying she would probably pick this Team Adidas decor you know, versus any of the U.S. or Canadian national teams. They've got a great mix of girls. They contribute offensively and certainly strong on the back end as well. When you have the pairing of Laroque, Fast, Dunn, DiGirolamo, Mickelson, and Krasaniak, that is something to fear as a chance in front of Debian turned away. And a little and slow to get up there. You see the smiles from Renata Fast. She's able to laugh it off that she just went barreling through on that chance. A great opportunity on net. And she just takes the post right to the Tim Horton sign there. We'll get a look at it here. Nice speed there from Amanda Kessel. She's able to find Fast, who's jumped into the play, as I was just mentioning, that these defense really like to contribute offensively. And you have a ton of experience at the national level, too, obviously. Some Olympic medal winning women and a young Deidre Alamo part of the development program with Hockey Canada. So a lot of talent on the blue line for Team Adidas. And Sarah Nurse is going to come back on the ice in five seconds. As Team Harvey's is inside their zone, regrouping. Now with Eldridge long pass to Clark. Clark's trying to find Poulet as she's coming in, but Nurse out of the box is able to steal that pass, and they're going to be back on offense now. Gribbins below the goal line. Backhands it to Nurse. That shot goes high and wide. Nurse on the far side. She's got Stacy in the slot. Good coverage, though, by Clark as she's going to have to hang on to that puck and battle Poulet in the corner. Stacy trying to chase that puck down. Poulet is going to get it. But Adidas is able to keep it inside the zone. Greco now. Good patience. Dita Dita Channel. And Amanda Kessel. Her first weekend in the PWHPA this season. Back to Dunn at the point. Jinsi Dunn looking for Kessel. And that's blocked by Poulain. She's going to clear it out as DiGirolamo inside the zone. Quick pass up to Dunn is batted down by Eldridge, but it finds its way to O'Neill. Backhand pass to Kessel. Kessel's put into the boards by Skimura. Now Eldridge with time, backhands it over, finds Rattray at the far blue line, two on one. Nice pass to Skimura, and she stops in front of Rooney. 
What a pass by Jamie Lee Rattray. Yeah, get that girl some pasta because she's already got the sauce. She just floats this one over a sliding D and Skimmer is able to get that shot on net. Maddie Rooney follows this pass nicely, is able to suck it up. We'll get a look here. You see the D drop down. She just floats it right so it lands right on the stick of Haley Skimura. Great stop by Maddie Rooney. National member with Team USA. Jill Sonier blocks that shot from Herman at the point. Gets back to Richards on the near side, looking for Rattray. Download a shaver. Sophia Shaver in the boards with fast. Skimura digging for the puck. O'Neill there. Skimura wins it. Wraparound attempt. Clears the crease. Shaver thought she had a wide open net. Now Ma. Centering pass put aside by Larocque. And O'Neill with time tries to find fast. Goes off her skate. And Team Harvey's with a lot of pep in their step so far in this one. Back inside the zone. The Rock is going to skate it out herself. Long pass to Sonia. That's something Sonia is good at. Just picks it up with her back skate and able to put the forecheck on. But Lee Steckline's going to stop her behind Dibien. Now Larson is going to regroup with Steckline. Good pressure. Again, by Team Adidas. Mickelson now, back the other way to Vespa. Mickelson jumping in on the play. She's got an opening on the backhand. Just loses the handle on the puck. In front for Vespa, that one goes wide. To the point, Krasaniak. Shot, and Debye sees that the entire way. And we'll get a whistle and a face off inside the Harvey zone. Mega Mickelson leading that rush with a nifty little move. And she's able to fold around the Harvey's D. We'll take a look at it here. Nice little go to the backhand, just loses the handle on it. She's actually completing her MBA at Queen Smith School of Business. So a woman of many ambitions. Of course, she's in the broadcasting world as well. Has two kids at home, recovered from knee surgery last year. And she's just an unstoppable force. A world champion at the age of 37 after that devastating injury last season. Sarah Nurse, centering pass is blocked. She's now in the slot, wants it. Good stick there by Demers, and we're gonna get a penalty to Laura Stacy, and it's gonna be an interference call. I thought maybe we'd get a high sticking call from that. Yeah, she just got a little bit too friendly there with uh, Poznikov kind of through the zone. A nothing play, and obviously she's disagreeing with it, but Team Adidas will sit for two or less. They're down in their zone now, and I'm sure that Harvey's is looking to capitalize as we're scoreless right now midway through the first period. Sarah Nurse is just talking to the referee at center ice. Maybe just trying to get an explanation of how this game's gonna go. That, as a player, you have to judge these things early on. You have referees that, like our earlier game, they're gonna let the physical stuff go, and that was nice to see. Some are gonna be really finicky on certain things, and you gotta figure that out in the first half of the game. And I think right now we know where this game's gonna go, and the girls are gonna have to be extra careful to stay out of the box. So a power play for Team Harvey's, their second of the game, and that one just touched the netting, so it's going to stay inside as it was tipped off of LaRock's stick. And Jocelyn LaRock, I believe I mentioned it when we were back in Nova Scotia, but she's the co-owner of a strength and conditioning gym, Stoke. You can find them at Stoke Strength. They do a lot of great work. Actually, they gave me my program, so they're keeping me in shape. And a lot of these women we've mentioned are trying to get through all of these incredible storylines and share what they're doing off the ice as well. A lot of impressive stuff. Uh, some people in medical school, some people with some really big jobs, some couple like yourself, Liz, firefighters, police officers. Yeah, I spent, uh, I went out for dinner last night with Jess Jones, who's on Team Adidas, wearing number 22, and she's in a fourth line role this year, and she was just, you know, complimenting, actually, Jamie Lee Ratchet, who plays a similar role with the national team of 
how difficult it is to spend minutes on the bench and then jump into a, a, a game where the players are warm and they've you know, had a couple shifts to pull out a, a big 45 seconds or less. And it's a new role for her. And as you mentioned, her day job, uh, she's an OPP officer here in Ontario. So we thank her for her service and you know, wish her and those around her safe shifts as they keep us safe. Paris Philippoule now inside the zone, finds Clark, but it bounces off her stick, and O'Neill's going to take advantage, gets stopped at the blue line, but Team Adidas will clear it out. 45 seconds remaining on the Laura Stacy penalty. And so far, no damage done. Harmon gets dropped on the forecheck in the corner. Now Laura Fortino with Shaver and DeGeorge. 30 seconds. Steckline sends it back down low to Shaver. Sophia Shaver with time. Nifty pass to herself off the boards. Goes back to the point. Fortino and Steckline will exchange passes. Fortino looks like she's going to shoot, but she'll give it back to Steckline. And Jill Sonia makes a nice block up top. Stacy coming out of the box. Tough one. It's one of your top penalty killers in the penalty box, but she's out now. And Harvey's goes 0 for 2 on the power play to start this game. And here comes Laura Stacy. Stacy, long pass intended for Vespa. Intercepted by Skimura. Done now with time. It's going to skate that one in and leave it for Vespa. Looking to the far side. They'll go to the point. Dijeralamo now at the blue line. Her shot. Rebound in the crease, but no one there to put it away. Corbins now will send it down low. Pops out to Vespa. Willoughby with a shot. And it goes into the corner. Now Poulain to Eldridge. Eldridge, she loves this shot. She's just going to clear it up top. Gives her teammates a chance to change. Barak looking for Gribbins on the boards. Talked about this in the earlier game. The puck quite bouncy here today. Girls are having a hard time settling it down in some areas. Fast in Laroc. Good regroup inside their zone. Pass to Gribbins. Goes wide. Now channel on the far side. It's got pressure by Nurse. Goes back to Greco. That's taken away by Kessel. Finds Fast at the point. Fast is going to stay up front. She was going to the net. Now Stacy at the point. Takes a shot. Fast still in front. She's going to switch with Laura Stacy now as LaRock is down on offense. Her cycle attempt to Kessel is intercepted, and Harvey's is going to clear that puck out. Fast, though, at the blue line. Picks it up quickly, tries to find Nurse. Nurse with pressure from Emma. Not happy about that one. She's going to skate towards the referee, and she goes for the hit on Skimura. Skimura dodges it. So the players not happy with the refing so far in this one. You can see the frustration on the ice. Okay. And you're just looking for some maturity on the team Adidas side. I mean, you can't control the refereeing, so. There's a shot by Jamie Lee Rattray. That's going to squeak by Maddie Rooney. It hits off of the defender in front. And it's going to be the first goal of the game as Sonia is now talking to the referee at center ice. Yeah, and just as I was saying, you know, you can only control so much. Jamie Lee Rattray gets an opportunity on net here. Skimmer with a nice drop pass. She pulls uh, Krasaniak, it was, to the center of the ice, which opens the lane for Jamie Lee Rattray. She looks just to put a puck on net, and it kind of bobbles its way, finds its way through Maddie Rooney to give Harvey's the one goal lead. Well, and to your point, that's the third time that Sarah Nurse has been dropped in different areas of the ice. So you can sense her frustration, but there's nothing you can do about the refereeing and they will make or break a game. And on, we saw that earlier today too with, we saw a call, it was the right call to make on the ice, but Team Sonnet obviously letting it get to them maybe a little bit more than they should have. And you just saw it spiral into the third period in that 6-1 loss to Team Scotiabank. And we'll see how they respond now. Di Alamo and Jinsi Dunn 
Exchanging passes. Dunn gets the shot in front and hits O'Neal. Now Sonia looking for the loose puck. Potomac finds Sonia in front. Can't bury it. His O'Neal. She's tied up. Now Herman trying to clear it out. Some good pressure from Team Adidas. Here's O'Neal in front again. Good play by DeGeorge as she stops that puck. And they move it up front. Poznikov to Demers. They've got a two on one. Great play by Maddie Rooney. Stop that puck. And I wanted to give a shout out to Alex Poznikov. Her sister, Taylor Ray, is actually a country music artist in Nashville. She's got a new single coming out soon, and Poz does her video for her as we see her create this opportunity for her line. And Maddie Rooney able just to scoop that one up. Poznikov is going back door on that one, so a great stop as Poulet wins the draw back to Steckline at the point. Her shot cleared wide. Here comes Renata Fast. A long pass intended for Sarah Nurse. And it's going to be an icing call. As her name suggests, Renata Fast, one of the quickest D, especially in this league and in the national program. Yeah, and it's such an addition for the defensive core to have defense that can jump into the play and recover quickly to set up. And that's one of the things that Renata Fast is so good at. Renata Fast also a panelist uh, for TSN during the U18 Women's World Championships, as well as Jamie Lee Rattre and Jocelyn LaRock. So a, a lot of broadcasting talent on the ice as well. Now you love to see those opportunities going to these players who are, have just been students of the game for so long and they see the game so well. Team Adidas now a hit at center ice as Gribbins was, or sorry, Jones was coming off the bench, just collides with Clark. Both are okay. Now the long pass to Jones. Tries to get it inside. Skamura hits her at the blue line. Now on the other side to Jamie Lee Rattre. Skamura will dump it in. Zaniak and Shaver battling below the goal line now. Vespa's going to try to help out. Watch closely by Rattre. Jones gets the puck at the hash mark, but unable to get it behind Richards. Zaniak over to the far side to find Mickelson. Now Jones, but nice one-handed backhand pass. And we've got room on the far side. A quick shot by Donovan. Gobbled up by Debian. Jess Jones showing her finesse there. She was known back in the CWHL days. She actually tied Mary Philippe Poulin in points in 2017. And I only know this because she was on my team on the second last place, Brampton Thunder, while, of course, Poo on the first place, Les Canadiennes. She gives Donovan a great heads up play there for an opportunity on net. Good old CWHL days. Miss those team names. And now back inside the Adidas zone is Team Harvey's. They're looking for their second of the game. De George along the boards gets stripped of the puck. And here comes Team Adidas the other way. O'Neill with speed. These two dangerous on a line. Sonia and O'Neill, very similar styles of play, but so much speed. Here's O'Neill now with the puck. Back to the point for Jinsey Dunn. Fans on the puck. And here's the chance for Poznikov. Poznikov on the breakaway. Goes over the glove, it's bouncing and it's in! Maddie Rooney couldn't handle it as it was trickling in behind her. And Poznikov puts her team up by two. And you see the girls just so happy for Alex Poznikov. This is one of those highly underrated players. She played U Sports. We're gonna get a look at this break. Just a juggled puck, an unfortunate bounce for Jincy Dunn at her blue line. Paws has got such great speed. She comes down, heads up play. Just gets enough of a flick on that puck to juggle it over Maddie Rooney's glove. Happy to see the Team Harvey's girl ra girls rally around her. Tough break for Jincy Dunn at the blue line. But we'll see again a 2-0 lead for the first place team. The tempo in this one. Good from the start on both sides, but Team Adidas battling some frustrations with the stripes. Now Channel, inside her own zone, takes her time, finds Eldridge, moves the puck over to Marie-Philippe Poulain. 
Poulet inside the zone, waits, finds Eldridge, quick shot, and Rooney stops that one. Nurse avoids the hit from Eldridge. Gets the puck back below the goal line. Settles things down as she finds Fast. Fast to LaRock, quickly over to Laura Stacy and in the middle for Kessel. Kessel just made a quick move at the blue line and threw Stacy offside, so we'll get a face off in the neutral zone with a minute 30 remaining in the first period. Shots on net so far in favor of Team Harvey's 12 to 10. Scamura wins the draw for Harvey's. Harmon to Richards. And Shaver gets it in the neutral zone at center ice. Krasaniak takes that away, finds Mickelson quickly, and now Willoughby back the other way. Vespa's going to intercept that rim out attempt. Mickelson's going to help keep it in for Team Adidas. Vespa now below the goal line. Looking to go back to the point for Mickelson. Along the boards. Skamura watching closely as Willoughby was trying to make something happen. Skamura at center ice. They move the puck to Rattray. Her shot stopped by Krasaniak, and here comes Vespa. Again, good back check by Skamura as she intercepts that puck and now regroup for Laura Fortino and Steckline. Shaver tries to make a centering pass to Skamura. Everyone going off for a change. Fortino's going to send it in behind Rooney. Rooney playing the puck. Nice play as she gets it up to Jinsey Dunn. Potomac finds Sonnier through the legs and inside the zone. Potomac picks up the loose puck. Potomac below the goal line leaves it. For Sonia, she gets put into the boards by Steckline. 10 seconds remaining. The referees are going to let them play this out. And they'll stop it at three seconds. Sonia looks like she just got a little bit of damage in behind the net there when she got put into the boards. She goes on the bench as her replacement will only have to kill off three seconds. And after 20 minutes, Team Adidas finds themselves down two goals. Team Harvey's comes out strong in our final game of the Collingwood Showcase. We'll go down to ice level with Liz Knox. And your Team Harvey's goal scorer, Alex Poznikoff. Okay, we're ringside with Alex Poznikov after a busted ponytail. You got the second goal here to put your team up 2 nothing. What did you see on that goal? I was trying to read it a little bit, but I was more so worried about everyone behind me. So I just knew I had to elevate it quickly, and luckily it got past her. Yeah, showed some great speed. You're playing on a line with DeGeorge and Demers. Tell us a little bit about your line's chemistry. Yeah, well, this is actually our first game together, so it's kind of nice to get the first period. and feel each other out and they've been awesome. They're pretty effective out there, so it makes my job easy. Team Harvey's on a run and we're playing in front of a sold out crowd here in Collingwood. I know you've got family watching back home on CBC. Anything you want to say to the fans? Oh, just thank you to everyone. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for your guys' support, so we really appreciate it and hope to see you again someday soon. Thanks so much, Paz. Thank you. Thank you to Liz Knox and Alex Poznikoff. The second goal for Team Harvey is coming off her stick on the breakaway. We'll be right back with your second period. You're watching the Secret Dream Gap Tour. Gatorade, with electrolytes to help replenish what's lost in sweat. 
carbs to help fuel your working muscles and fluids to help you hydrate. Scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Gatorade. and welcome to Timbits of Wisdom. The advice show for grown-ups by Timbits. My son has tons of assists, but he's upset he has no goals. You can't always be the winner. How can I relax? Get more sleep. What do you think I should do? Just talk to them. The other team has feelings too. Um, what's the meaning of life? Just have fun. <laughs> Who just asked you that question? These dimensions are way off. Who built this? Show yourselves. What is this? He topped his Harvey's burger just the way he wanted. No. Extra pickles. Oh. Now he thinks he's in charge of everything. These barbecues even work? He's oh. the intern, right? He's gone mad with power. Am I the only one who knows how to architect? I'm the boss now. Ooh. The sun is out. The music is in your control. Your crush is here. The vibe is good. Vizzy Hard Seltzer is a vibe. My name is Kendall Coyne Schofield. I am from Palos Heights, Illinois. I played my college hockey at Northeastern University, and I'm currently on Team Adidas with the PWHPA. The PWHPA is the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association, and back in May of 2019, a group of players got together to form the Players Association with the mission to change the landscape of women's hockey forever. I hope to see a more consistent product on the ice so that when you, when you turn on your TV uh, during hockey season, you don't just see the NHL, you see uh, women's hockey just as consistently as you see men's hockey. Once we start seeing that, I think we'll really see the, the true growth that uh, the game has already exceeded, I think, without the infrastructure that it deserves. 
remember the first time I saw a women's hockey game was when I was 10 years old um, and the Olympic team came through the United Center in Chicago uh, to play Team Canada before the 2002 Olympic Games and I was just a bug on the glass and then from there the next game that I saw was with the women's national team was the one I played in. Um, just to show you the gap of how hard it is to find and, and see women in hockey. To be it when you can't see it, that's such a strong purpose and mission of, of the PWHPA. We know how important that visibility is uh, to the next generation. So that when these young girls grow up, they know that there's a place uh, for them to be in this sport professionally and make a living doing it.
Welcome back inside the Eddie Bush Memorial Arena. We've got second period action between Team Harvey's and Team Adidas coming at you. And we saw in the earlier game a referee call kind of derailed Team Sonnet's game, ending up a, with a 6-1 loss to Team Scotiabank. How does Team Adidas respond to a tough first period? This is a big 20 minutes for them. And as you said, one call cannot derail the mental focus of your team. These players are professional athletes. And although the game is frustrating at times at all levels, you know, you're looking for them to piece together a solid 20 minutes. Keep those feet moving and see if you can't draw the penalty to put your team on the power play. Well, and Anne Renee Dibien, we know, is a tough goaltender to face. And she's tough to beat. And then you've got the other depth of Team Harvey's as we see them come on the ice now of Eldridge, Clark, and, well, Marie-Philippe Poulain. But Team Adidas has the pieces. I want to talk about something we didn't get to in the first period. Kendall Coyne Schofield out with injury this weekend. In comes Amanda Kessel. Yeah, undisclosed injury for Kendall Coyne Schofield. I spoke with her briefly. She said she's for sure out this weekend. She'll take the next weekend as it comes. So Amanda Kessel making her season debut with the PWHPA, as we mentioned. She's been quite busy with the Pittsburgh Penguins organization. It's good to see her on the ice, and she's very seamlessly filled that role of Kendall Coyne trying to create chances for the people around her. A few of the women working with NHL clubs, Rebecca Johnston with the Calgary Flames, Haley Skimmer with the Washington Capitals, Amanda Kessel with the Pittsburgh Penguins, and Kendall Coyne Schofield with the Chicago Blackhawks, as well as Bridget Laquette. Did I miss anyone? <laughs> I, we may have, but you know what? It's just a testament to the skill and development that these players bring, and I'm so happy that NHL organizations are recognizing that. You know who I forgot? Marie-Philippe Poulain. Who's that? With the Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> She's easy to forget, though. Not a big name. Team Harvey's sending the puck in deep. Renata Fast will stop that one, and they're going to break out with Laura Stacy and Sarah Nurse. Sarah Nurse and... Laura Stacey's first time playing with Amanda Kessel, their American rival on the national stage. Seemed to enjoy it yesterday, but a 3-0 loss to Scotiabank. And we talked about it in the first period, but narrowing that lead for the second place spot in the PWHPA standings. Only separated by one point now are Team Adidas and Team Scotiabank. So three points today on the line are huge for Team Adidas. And certainly not taking away from the offensive chances that they had yesterday versus Scotiabank. They are generating a ton of traffic, good shots on net, and great shot selection, but Kristen Campbell is just unflappable as she was again today, letting in only one goal on 30-some-odd shots. It's Kamura now. She's been all over the ice today. Trying to find the puck in her skates. Gets picked up by Jincy Dunn, and now Deidre Alamo. Couple nicknames on these girls that I, I get tied up with. Deidre Alamo is one of them. Yeah, the girls call her Digi, and it's just such a great handle. She's a nice young athlete. She's quickly finding her stride in the PWHPA, and I can't wait to see how her professional career pans out. A nice little move behind the net by Jill Sonye. And Team Adidas is still trying to clear the puck out as Rutri gets put into the boards by O'Neill. Here's Sonye now on the near side. She's got Savannah Harmon in front of her. Puts the brakes on, finds Ponomac going to the net, but Richard's watching her closely. Ponomac to Jincy Dunn, her shot stopped by Shaver. Gets a second shot at it, misses wide. Now Demers, backhand pass to Richards. Kristen Richards playing both forward and D. And those players sometimes not getting enough credit for how difficult it is to flip flop between the two positions, especially at this level. Yeah, Kristen Richards does it all. I've even seen her play a little goalie when we've got a fun skate going on. And I definitely want to give a shout out to her school that she's a, a guidance counselor at, De La Salle College in Toronto. Uh, they've done a fantastic job supporting her hockey career. Alex Poznikoff has the second goal for Team Harvey, sends it in deep. Megan Mickelson rims that around the board, trying to find Willoughby. Hit her skate and went right back in. He'll try the other way. For Gribbins. Gribbins, former captain of the University of Guelph, my hometown. And uh, former home of one of our friends in the PWHPA, someone you would have been with yesterday, Cassie Campbell. Yeah, and Gribbins, this is somewhat of a homecoming for her as well from Port Elgin, which is d just down the street. 
So I know she was excited to play in Owen Sound yesterday. I'm sure her family is in attendance to have her back almost on home ice. Willoughby now with speed around channel. Sends the puck over to the far side to Gribbins. Centering pass to Vespa, stopped by Clark. And now Poulain. Don't even need to see the name bar or the number. You know who's bulldozing through those players below the goal line. She moves the puck up to Clark. Now Clark and Eldridge trying to make something happen. Stop by Fast though. And a long pass to Sarah Nurse. Two on one with Laura Stacy. Nurse shoots. Stop by Debian. Back to Kessel. Kessel shot goes wide. And Larocque trying to sneak in there. And the puck's going to pass the blue line. They'll regroup in the neutral zone. Kessel now along the boards with Fortino and Poulain. Nurse will pick up the loose puck. She's got Laura Stacy with her. Moves it. Stacy's going to take a shot. That hits deck line. Oskamura to Fortino. Off the boards to Eldridge. Eldridge tries to dump it in deep. Stops. LaRock. I'll regroup for Harvey's. Skimura can't find Shaver. And Debian's going to come out and play that puck as Sonia was forechecking hard. O'Neill now. Patience at the blue line waiting for the onside call. Now Jincy Dunn has room. Dunn, one on two against the D. She's tied up by Steckline. Skimura now. Pickpocketed. Here's Sonia in the slot. Her shot goes wide. Now O'Neill at the side of the net. And Debian with the net off is going to get the whistle. And it's going to stay inside the zone. Yeah, smart play there by Debian. And of course, she's trying to seal nice and tight in that RVH post position to make sure that Kristen O'Neill doesn't get a wrap on it. There we see a look at Jill Sonia's shot on net. And Debian just does such a great job cutting down the angle forcing that shot wide and then sealing that tight post on Kristen O'Neill. One thing in talking to the goalies yesterday was we're not using the pegs that we're normally playing with. So the nets are coming off a little bit. I, for those who might play in the minor hockey ranks, they've just got like the standard steel uh, short peg where we normally play with a full insert peg. So the net is coming off a little bit more, just the strength of the goalies as they push off. As O'Neill gets a couple shots on Debian. And a good shot from Teacher Alamo at the point to start that play. And as you mentioned, that has become part of the style of goaltending as an anchor point to push off of. So although the net comes off, it's not always intentional. We see this floater on net. And Kristen O'Neill, she's done a great job getting in that dirty zone, just trying to pick up loose pucks. I know she's trying to get those a little higher on a, you know, sprawling and Renee Debien. Now Amal clears the zone, trying to find Larson as she's streaking through the neutral zone, but it's stopped by Vespa and Donovan. Now Richards on the far side for Team Harvey's. Long pass intended for Amal. Stopped by Mickelson. Mickelson now. A pass intended for Vespa is going to go the distance. They're going to wave it off and say that Richards was in reach to touch it. And that one's always at the discretion of the lineswoman. And we'll keep play going. As Kirio sends it down deep. Now Larson trying to find Demers. Can be stopped up by Kersaniak. To George though, picks it up on the first side to the point for Channel, her shot high and wide. Kessel now with time, finds Willoughby. Willoughby, one on four, is going to be patient with the puck. Keep it in the neutral zone as she goes off for a change. Debian now loves to play the puck. And does make a successful pass, even with the forecheck. Here's Sarah Nurse trying to find Stacy. Good stick by Demers. Nurse gets it back in the neutral zone, but Demers will take it back just as quick. Here's Posnikoff. Good back check by Laura Stacy as she gets Posnikoff's stick before the shot. A giveaway to George now, her shot over the net. Down low, LaRock trying to settle things down. Stacy will find the puck. Stacy hard pass for Nurse. They can't connect. They'll have to wait for the onside call as Kessel tries to help out by sending the puck in deep. It's gonna be taken away by Clark. 
Again, a good back check by Laura Stacy. Part of her game that I love so much, the hard work defensively. Long pass to Jill Sani. She'll wind up for the shot. And Debian gets a glove on it and it'll go out of bounds. Get the face off inside. Debian gets just enough of this one to send it out of bounds. A little bit uncharacteristic, honestly, for Anne Renee. She's used to scooping those pucks up, but you know, no harm done on this play. She'll have the face off to her right. And you spoke of Rosie Demers. This is her first year in the PWHPA. She's a back-to-back -back ECAC champion, I believe, at Colgate University. So coming from a great program, and she's showing her stuff here in the PWHPA. A set face-off play doesn't pan out for Team Adidas. They sent Jinsey Dunn down at the hash marks and Jill Sonny at the point looking for the one-timer. And now Team Harvey's back the other way. Eldridge to Steckline, back down low. And Deidre Alamo is going to tip that one into the stands. And I have to command, commend Corey Chevry on her, you know, just attention to detail with this team. She's running up set plays. She's focused on, on all their D zone. And of course, offense comes easily to them. I did want to give a shout out back home to Janice, Chev's mom. We went to a Cat and Crows concert way back in the day, and uh, I know she's tuning in. She's extremely proud of all that Corey has accomplished. Well, here's a chance for Jamie Lee Rattray at the side of the net. And she squeaks it by Maddie Rooney for her second of the game. We spoke a little bit about these live kick plates behind the net, out of the corners and directly behind the goaltenders. And on this play, a little bit of a broken play. She finds that back kick plate and Jamie Lee Rattray is on the doorstep. You see Scamura, I believe she's trying to get a shot on net or she just, you know, saw that Jamie was sneaking to the back door. She was able to pull it off the yellow pad there and Rattray buries her chance on a sprawling Maddie Rooney. Scamura, just a solid 200 foot player. And she's been a big piece to this Harvey's team. On a team that you talked so much about that first line, this second line has been the one putting up the big points. Rach right now with two in this one, looking for her third. She loses a handle on that one. Kessel's going to move the puck up to Laura Stacy. This is where Stacy's dangerous. She's going to put the brakes on, wait for Nurse. Nurse in the slot. Her shot tipped in front, and Kessel gets her first in the PWHPA. Get the girls going, Amanda Kessel. A great feed from Sarah Nurse off the plate. As you said, Laura Stacy leading that rush, getting that button hook right at the hash marks. She goes cross ice and a nice little bouncing puck. Amanda Kessel is able to get a stick on it, buries it in the open net. And they're giving Adidas life here. Let's go, girls. Welcome back, Amanda Kessel. Her first of the 2022-23 campaign in her first weekend back. And that's what makes the greats great. They can take all that time off, come back and score a big goal in the second period, in the second game of the weekend. A great play too, started by Laura Stacy. As they announce the Rattray goal in house, they're gonna do an Adidas goal right after. A good response by Team Adidas in the second period. Keep things interesting. Amanda Kessel, obviously most famously known for being the sister-in-law of Courtney Kessel Burchard, who just coached the women's U18 to a world championship out in Sweden. Want to send our congratulations to her and Team Canada as well. One thing to note too in this game, both of these teams have the highest expected goals per game. Both teams averaging about three and a half goals a game. So we might be in for a couple more in this one. And here's a pass attempt to O'Neill at the far blue line. M Maddie Rooney thought she was getting a penalty, or well, that her team was gonna get a power play, went to the bench, no harm, no foul, she'll head back. She was looking a little confused there. I've just seen the faces of Renata Fass and Jocelyn the Rocker waving her quickly back as Adidas luckily had possession of the puck entering a Harvey zone. Well, in the first period, we saw a few penalties. It's calmed down a little bit in this one. Willoughby 
Now a bouncing puck in the crease. They being able to track it down. Back to Fast at the point. Fast with a quick shot. Can't get a stick on it. Are her Team Adidas teammates. Now to George. Takes her time. Tries to clear it out. It'll find LaRock at center ice. The second attempt. Finds Willoughby on the far side. Now Vespa trying to get around Greco. Eldridge is going to come down, poke check that puck to the near side for Channel. She'll send it back to Eldridge. Eldridge is going to send it down all the way down the ice. And it's going to be an icing call. I think she was aiming for Maddie Rooney. Just missed. Not a bad play. And Team Adidas getting on the board here. That's a huge goal for them as they were scoreless last last game or yesterday against Scotiabank. So getting the monkey off their back about midway through this second period, they've got lots of life in them. Sarah Nurse wins the draw. Amanda Kessel picks up the loose puck, finds Laura Stacy, And Mickelson shot blocked by Clark. And here comes Team Harvey's. Clark trying to find Eldridge as she was streaking to the net. Too far ahead and here comes Team Adidas again. Laura Stacy. Love to watch Laura Stacy skate. So much power in her stride. She's stopped by Channel, or sorry, Richards on the far side. And as Harmon sends the puck up to Poulet. Poulet in the slot. Delays. Finds Harmon. Harmon can't get the return pass to Richards. And Adidas is going to clear it out. Nurse is going to beat everybody to the puck and avoid the icing call. Great play by Sarah Nurse. Now Potomac. Good opportunity blocked by Richards. To the point, done, shoots, and that's gloved down by Debian. Sarah Nurse showing her speed there to wave the icing and keep the pressure on this Team Harveys. So we'll get a face off inside the Harveys zone as O'Neill is trying to set up something on the draw. She wins it, goes back to Dunn. The shot though stopped by Fortino. Sonia picks up the loose puck but gets rid of it right away and it's unfortunately to Rattray. She'll go below the goal line. Jinsey Dunn trying to rim it around. It'll be stopped by Skamura. Skamura battling Jinsey Dunn. Finds Shaver at the side of the net. Can't get the shot off. He'll cycle it down low once again but it's picked up by O'Neill. Kristen O'Neill now with speed through the neutral zone. Sends it in behind Laura Fortino. Steckline first on the loose puck. Over to Rattray. Rattray can't get it out, but Skimmer's going to help at the blue line. It's taken quickly back by Willoughby. Willoughby at the side of the net. Quick shot. Oh, almost fooled Debian, but she's going to cover it up. Yeah, great opportunity there. And she's looking for that far pad knee, and she's trying to get that rebound off the far pad. Debian does a good job ramping the puck up so she can smother it. I did want to talk about Caitlin Willoughby for a second here because her day job is an operating room nurse. So another one of those careers that how she balances this, the two of these things, I just don't know. You see her with a great look on net there. She's a fourth year player in the PWHPA and somebody who's just giving back to the community on and off the ice. Donovan thought she was getting waved out of the center or the face off circle, but ends up winning the draw. Back to Renata Fast, her shot is high and wide. Now DeJour trying to clear it out, but Fast coming down, keeping it alive with Jones. Jones to Willoughby, her shot blocked. LaRock coming off the blue line and it's a loose puck in the crease, no one there to bury it. Jess Jones back to the point, Fast to LaRock. LaRock shot, no one there to tip it. Fast thought about coming down a pinch, but decides to stay back at the blue line. Poznikov tips it out. Stacy wants the puck in the near side. She'll get it. She's got Kessel going over the blue line, but she's offside. Yeah, and if I'm Team Adidas' first line right now, I'm buzzing. Their fourth line, essentially, with Jones, Donovan, and Willoughby, just absolutely maintain pressure in the Harvey zone. They're playing a bigger role, I think, than is expected of them. So you're relying now on your first line to really step it up and get one here for Team Adidas. Krzaniak. Sends it in deep for Team Adidas. They'll try to get the four check going once again. As Nurse is taken down for the fourth time this game, she's slow to get up. 
And it looks like she's going to head off, shake that one off, and we are going to get a Harvey's penalty, and it's going to be to number 29, Marie-Philippe Poulain. And somewhat uncharacteristics of Marie-Philippe Poulain. We'll get a look here. I think she's rolling hard for the puck with her stick on the ice, and Nurse kind of just spins at the last minute, goes over the tea kettle, and who, you know, fortunate, fortunate for Team Adidas, will sit for two or less. We'll see what Team Adidas can do on this power play. One they've been waiting for all game long. Nurse able to stay on the ice after taking that spill. Sends the puck over to Mickelson. Comes out of the blue line and they're right back in though. Nurse now put into the boards by Harma but still gets the pass off to Stacy And to Kessel. Along the boards back to Stacy at the goal line. Trying to slow things down now. Done. Over to Mickelson. Down low to Kessel. Kessel, a one-timer for Sarah Nurse, misses the net. Now Mickelson, down low. Sends it over to the far side for Kessel. To the point for Nurse. Sarah Nurse, back door intended for Mickelson. But a good stick by Emily Clark. One of the best penalty killers from Team Canada. Amanda Kessel on the far side. Has room. Watch closely by Clark. Back to the point for Dunn. Dunn with the shot. Hits Stacy and it's loose. No one could get a stick on it. Now Kessel. 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Going back door again for Fast. Good sticks by Team Harvey's on the PK. Fast. Back to Dunn at the point. Dunn, nice attempt to Sonny at the side of the net. Fast. Down low, these Harvey's penalty killers are exhausted. The Rock now at the point to Potomac. Potomac's gonna take a quick shot. And you almost don't want to whistle at this point. You want to try and keep this exhausted group of girls out there. That hits the post on La Rock's shot from the point. Four seconds, Poulain's gonna come back out and it does squeak out. And the penalty expires, and Marie-Philippe Poulain is back on the ice. But now, they're headed back to the power play as Savannah Harmon sends that puck into the stands. And after a, what looks like a really good power play, Adidas will have to, well, they'll get two more minutes, but they'll have to send those exhausted power play units back out on the ice. Yeah, and you see the girls stepping out right now. Laura Stacy, you know, trying to catch her breath here to go for another two minutes, keep the pressure on Team Harvey's. But what a proud penalty kill by Team Harvey's. As you mentioned, Emily Clark, even late in the shift, getting out to get sticks on pucks. As we see her here, trying to take away a lane. A great shot from Jocelyn LaRock that just misses that far side post. So back on the power play as Savannah Harmon sits for two this time. And the only good news for Team Harvey's is they've got one of the other best penalty killers in the game, Marie-Philippe Poulain, back on the ice. Jinsey done with a shot. That one's tipped. Laura Stacy at the side of the net. And Debian makes the save. Just great tracking from Debian to find that puck through traffic. And then again, off that back kick plate, Laura Stacy's on the doorstep. She's looking to whack in a rebound. And Debian just does a great job taking away the net. Or Stacy is someone too who's just improved tremendously in the last five or so years. Member of Team Canada, winning a gold medal in Beijing. And she's been a dominant force for Team Adidas this season. Megan Mickelson trying to go to Amanda Kessel on the far side. That's gonna be cleared out by Sophia Shaver. And I did want to mention Sophia Shaver, an advocate for mental health after losing her brother to suicide back in 2016. It's a cause very close to her heart, and she's doing wonderful things in the hockey world. And again, if you haven't seen Sophia Shaver's goal from yesterday, head to our social media pages. Just an absolute dinger off the crossbar. Went bar down for the first goal in yesterday's Harvey's win against Team Sonnet, 3-2 but an incredible story 
And an incredible person is Sophia Shaver. And if you have a chance to learn more about her story and her work for mental health awareness, please do so. 25 seconds remaining on the power play. Potomac now inside the zone. Going around to the far side, looking for opportunity. Sonny alone in front. Last seconds, Kimura got her stick. Now fast. Down low to Sonia. Sends it in front, no one there to bury it. And it's going to be cleared out, and that'll about do it to the Harmon penalty. So they go 0 for 2, back to back. But they're right back in it. Renata Fast finding Willoughby. Now down low, Steckline. To Shaver. Shaver can't get out with Fast on her back, so go back to Steckline. And Harmon out of the penalty box on the ice. A long pass to Sophia Shaver. Maddie Rooney will come out and ruin that. But J.P. Lee Rattray takes it away. Back to Shaver in the slot. Couldn't get the shot off. And Jocelyn LaRock in a long pass intended for Willoughby. Bounces off her stick, but still able to control it in the neutral zone. Harmon now, off the boards to Shaver, she stopped by fast. Imag off the bench with speed. Gets the puck in behind the D, now Rattray below the goal line, they're battling. Fast, good defensive skills there below the goal line. Poulain to Eldridge. Eldridge with a quick shot, blocker saved by Rooney. Willoughby's going to clear that one out. She'll stay on the forecheck as her line mates are going off for a change. First line coming out for Team Adidas. A minute 30 left in the period. Still down by two. Long pass to Emily Clark. Clark is waiting for teammates as Jincy Dunn stopped the breakaway. Nurse clears it out. Amanda Kessel's on the chase now. Finds Richards. Backhand pass inside the zone. Eldridge trying to find DeGeorge in the slot. That pass goes wide. Jincy Dunn now trying to clear it out. Stopped by Richards. DeGeorge gets put into the boards by Dunn. Loose puck is picked up by Nurse. Nurse finds Stacy. She tips it in. She's going to chase Debian, who's stick handling the puck in her own zone. To Nurse. Loose puck in front. And Nurse gets taken down again in front. And no call on the play. A scrambly situation in front of Debian. Almost saw Nurse get her first of the game. And it's going to be an icing call against Team Adidas with 30 seconds remaining in the second period. We want to remind everyone that February 10th, we will be back in Ontario with the OHL Showcase. And we'll take a quick look at this last play. A nice stick by Stacy to get behind the D. And Debian, as she often does, playing the puck. And Laura Stacy continues the pressure, and there's a nice attempt by Nurse, as you see she gets tripped up at the end there. February 10th weekend, we'll be back in OHL showcase action. Niagara, Peterborough, Barry, and Kitchener. So be sure to check out pwhpa.com for your tickets or schedule as Skamura going to the net. Hits Maddie Rooney. You can see she was quick to... Check to see if Maddie Rooney was okay. See here on the replay again, just battling in front with O'Neill and her back skate gets Rooney in the mask, but all good as she bounces back up. Skimmer and O'Neill now will face off. And O'Neill wins that draw. Mickelson behind the net. Stripped away by Rattray. Looking for one last chance. Well, that's going to do it for 40 minutes. Well, Team Harvey's, it's a different kind of 2 nothing lead. Two goal lead, sorry. 3-1 after 40 minutes. The shot's still in favor of Team Harvey's, but 25-23. to 23. And Team Adidas will have a chance, 20 more minutes to try and narrow that gap for first place in the PWHPA standings. We'll head down to ice level as Liz Knox will be joined by Amanda Kessel. 
Her first goal of the 2022-23 campaign comes in her first weekend back. All right, we're ringside with Amanda Kessel putting Team Adidas on the board. From Sarah Nurse, Nurse the Kessel, a combo we're not used to seeing. What's it like playing with some of the Canadian girls? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I think in my whole career I haven't really had the chance to play with any of them and mostly playing against them, Sarah at Wisconsin. So this is my first. Uh, it's been fun and a lot of speed out there. And we're happy to have you back. This is actually your first weekend competing with the PWHP this year. Your job with the Pittsburgh Penguins keeping you very busy. What's it like to get that first one under your belt? That's awesome. I think this weekend we were a little bit snake bitten. Uh, I was thinking that I was bringing our team down here, but I think we're going to have a strong third and give it a game. Certainly, you may be the good luck charm, and we all know the 3 1 goal, the 3 1 lead is the most dangerous lead in hockey. What are you guys going to do in the last 20 to really put the pressure on Team Harvey's? Yeah, we got to continue getting it deep in their zone. They have a lot of skill and talent over there, and then put more shots on her. She's obviously a world class goalie, so we need to test her a little bit more and get to the net. Make sure you check out the Keller and Kess show. I know you guys just started your own podcast. We'll look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. All right, thanks to Liz Knox and Amanda Kessel. And a welcome back to Amanda Kessel, a very welcomed addition to the Secret Dream Gap Tour. We'll be right back with your third period. You're watching the PWHPA Secret Dream Gap Tour, the Collingwood Showcase. Gatorade, with electrolytes to help replenish what's lost in sweat. Carbs to help fuel your working muscles and fluids to help you hydrate. Scientifically formulated so you never stop competing. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Gatorade. and welcome to Timbits of Wisdom. The advice show for grown-ups by Timbits. My son has tons of assists, but he's upset he has no goals. You can't always be the winner. How can I relax? Get more sleep. What do you think I should do? Just talk to them. The other team has feelings too. Um, what's the meaning of life? Just have fun. Who is that? 
you that question? These dimensions are way off. Who built this? Show yourselves. What is this? He topped his Harvey's burger just the way he wanted. No. Extra pickles. Oh. Now he thinks he's in charge of everything. These barbecues even work? He's the intern, right? He's gone mad with power. Am I the only one who knows how to architect? I'm the boss now. The sun is out. The music is in your control. Your crush is here. The vibe is good. Vizzy Hard Seltzer is a vibe. My name is Kendall Coyne Schofield. I am from Palos Heights, Illinois. I played my college hockey at Northeastern University, and I'm currently on Team Adidas with the PWHPA. The PWHPA is the Professional Women's Hockey Players Association and back in May of 2019 a group of players got together to form the Players Association with the mission to change the landscape of women's hockey forever. I hope to see a more consistent product on the ice so that when you, when you turn on your TV uh, during hockey season you don't just see the NHL, you see uh, women's hockey just as consistently as you see men's hockey. Once we start seeing that, I think we'll really see the, the true growth that uh, the game has already exceeded, I think, without the infrastructure that it deserves. I remember the first time I saw a women's hockey game was when I was 10 years old, um, and the Olympic team came through the United Center in Chicago uh, to play Team Canada before the 2002 Olympic Games, and I was just a bug on the glass. And then from there, the next game that I saw was with the women's national team was the one I played in. Um, just to show you the gap of how hard it is to find and, and see women in hockey. To be it when you can't see it, that's such a strong purpose and mission of, of the PWHPA. We know how important that visibility is uh, to the next generation. So that when these young girls grow up, they know that there's a place uh, for them to be in this sport professionally and make a living doing it.
Well, after a 36 hour visit to Collingwood, we have reached the final 20 minutes of this showcase. Our fifth of the year, not our last though. Please check out our schedule. We'll be back in Ontario in a few weeks time for the OHL showcase. And then we head to a place that I'm not complaining about. <laughs> Bring the bathing suits down to Tampa Bay, Florida for an American showcase ahead of Washington. So pwhpa.com is where you want to head to find the schedules and buy your tickets. I'm Izzy Germain, joined by Liz Knox. We have an interesting 40 minutes. These are the top two teams. I don't think we could have doubted it was going to be a good game, but still down by two, our team Adidas. Yeah, I think in predicting this game, this is probably how you draw it up. We've seen strong goaltending from Anne-Renée Debian for Team Harvey's. And at the other end, Maddie Rooney keeping her team in it. A little bit of special teams here and there, some lucky bounces, but this is anybody's game still. As I mentioned in the intermission, you know, a 3-1 lead is quite dangerous. One goal and they're back in this. Well, Adidas was quite frustrated after the first 20 with the lack, I guess, of penalties. They got a few in the second period, but weren't able to capitalize. Yep, keeping their feet moving. Just keep those feet going and hoping that the Harvey Six slide up into the hands or into the hip area, maybe draw a penalty. So it's going to be Sarah Nurse versus Marie-Philippe Poulain to start things off. Poulain wins that battle. Go back to Laura Fortino. Her pass intended for Poulain is going to be taken away, and or Stacy's going to send that one in deep. And a good interview with Amanda Kessel after the second period. As we mentioned, her first time playing with the Canadian national women. Her first stop on the PWHPA Tour. And uh, starts with a goal, which is nice. Lee Steckline now on the far side. It's put into the boards by Stacy. Her stick making contact with some of her teammates trying to get out of the way on the bench. Now Nurse at the blue line. Long pass finds Sonia coming off the bench. Jill Sonia to Potomac and her redirect turned aside by Debian. Back the other way, Harmon to Rattray. Rattray's been having a good game for Harvey's today. She sends it back. That one's high and wide from Harmon. Richards will keep things alive at the blue line. Back to Rattray. Over to Harmon. Harmon down low. Finds Skimura. Skimura backhand pass. She had Rattray there, but doesn't connect. Richards, though, once again keeps it in at the blue line. DiGirolamo battling. Skimura on the far side. Finds her teammate. And D partner done. But again, the breakout attempt stopped by Skimura. Down low for Deidre Alamo again. Skips over her stick. Shaver looking for that centering pass. Imar off the bench was coming in with speed but can't connect. Now Deidre Alamo on the near side. Goes back to Dunn. And Dunn's clear out attempt stopped again. Oh, well, having a hard time clearing the zone. But finally, Kristen O'Neill will send things in deep. And then we'll get fresh legs on the ice and get Nurse, or sorry, that was Vespa, the fourth line, getting on the ice. Krasaniak battling with Demers at the red line. Demers runs into Krasaniak but gets the puck to Larson. Larson centering attempt, stopped by Mickelson. Mickelson's going to jump up in the play, move the puck over to Jones. It's going to skip her, go the distance, and we'll get an icing call. Everyone will have to stay on the ice for Team Adidas. Yeah, great work from that energy line is what I'm going to call them from now on. Just trying to maintain possession of the puck, and if they get chances on net, that's a bonus. That's the kind of stuff that really fuels Team Adidas and, you know, elevates their first line to continue that kind of pressure. Willoughby runs into Poznikov, and the pass for Fortino at the blue line, clears the zone. They'll have to regroup in the neutral zone. Vespa now over to Krasaniak. Krasaniak backhands it over towards Jones. Goes over her head. That's an opportunity for Tino. Send it back in for Team Harvey's. Hallie Kras Krasaniak right now finishing her medical degree at the University of Calgary. And she's been published in a variety of works that I po couldn't possibly read, but especially in sports-related concussions and return to play protocol. 
just not enough for them to be professional athletes. They have to be doctors and heroes and all of the above. It's That's one of the things that I enjoy the most is just knowing their stories off the ice and how much goes into this. I don't think they get enough respect for that, especially those who are not part of the national programs. They have a tough task in keeping healthy and keeping fit for the national programs and have obviously difficult travel schedules with Team Canada and Team USA, but it's girls who really kept things together for the PWHPA last year during the Olympic centralization and residency years and still maintained their full-time jobs. And I find no two paths are the same. When we talk about Kruzaniak, she was part of that group that their team folded at University of North Dakota. Here's Marie-Philippe Poulain. Always got to be careful when she has the puck on her stick, but Rooney turns her aside. And go ahead. And as I was saying at the time, you know, she was in and out of the national team lineup trying to figure out what she wanted to do. And I guess somewhere in that mix up, she landed on going to med school and becoming a doctor. So we're so proud to have her as part of the PWHPA. And here's a chance in front. The puck is loose in the crease. Debian didn't know where it was. O'Neill is in the net. And Debian doesn't have a stick. And they're trying to untangle <laughs> themselves, and they will as the puck is cleared out by Emily Clark. They're doing their best Swan Lake impression there. There was a little tangle happening in the blue ice. But to your point, it's you see it in Haley Wickenheiser. She waited until she retired. She retired at the age of 36, 37, and then went to med school and finished all of that, and now obviously a doctor in Toronto. But some of these girls kind of doing it all at the same time. Well, and that's the unfortunate decision that most of us were faced with at some point in our career is you know, pursue the job that's going to pay your bills or continue to play hockey. And so, you know, we're working to professionalize our sport to the point that girls don't have to work these full-time jobs on the side. As we just get another look there at the opportunity on net, and the, we'll see the little dance that, oh, we just missed the little dance between Anne Renee Debian and Kristen O'Neill. But this is all part of what fuels our, our vision for women's hockey and, you know, what keeps us on this tour growing awareness trying to grow the game for the next generation of female hockey superstars. We talked about Billie Jean King yesterday. One of the biggest things that she said is, you know, we look at women's tennis, probably the most successful female professional league that we have. It didn't start out that way. And it started with the sacrifice and it started with Billie Jean King. And it's been over 50 years since she made that sacrifice and Yes, things are good now, but they weren't good then. And that's what the sacrifice is with these girls here. We might not see a professional league where Marie-Philippe Poulain and Kendall Coyne Schofield and Hillary Knight are getting paid millions of dollars to play hockey, but that is the hope in the future. And it's incredibly inspiring to have those words come from Billie Jean King herself to say what the PWHPA is doing is so alike what her and the original nine did. It's just, it gives me goosebumps to think about that this is a fight she was fighting over 50 years ago, and here we are now doing it in women's hockey. She's a great advocate for us and somebody who certainly keeps us, you know, our eyes on the prize in terms of professionalizing our sport. And if you want to know more, Nurse again dropped. This time she will get a penalty. I don't know what's going on with Sarah Nurse today and the team. And the, the burger bunch, I guess we call them, <laughs> but they continue to trip her up. She's taken a ton of abuse today. To her credit, she's bouncing up every time, but we are going to get an Adidas power play. I was going to say, if you haven't seen Billie Jean King's story and you don't necessarily know if you're part of those younger years, definitely watch Battle of the Sexes. As you see the trip there, pretty obvious one. Nifty little play between the legs there to draw Claire to George's stick out to try to challenge the play. And of course, Nurse just trips over it. Claire to George, one of three girls in her family her sister Tara is in the Air Force. Her sister Leah swims open water at the University of Florida, and she was an elite swimmer as well. Just some good DNA in that family. Here's the Adidas power play. Poulet not happy in the face-off drop there as she was resetting when the puck was dropped. So Adidas maintains control. Potomac trying to find Sonia in the slot. Bounces off her skate fast. We'll keep it alive, though. Potomac again for Sonia, stopped in front. Sonia looking dangerous on the power play. And she'll keep things alive. LaRock to Fast. Fast loses an edge. Goes into the boards. Makes a little damage to the Adidas logo. 
And Savannah Harmon is going to send things deep as Maddie Rooney comes out to play and we'll get fresh legs on the ice for Team Adidas. Renata Fass, of course, an Adidas-sponsored athlete, so I'm sure her agents will have something to say <laughs> about the damage to that rink board. <laughs> Come out of her contract. Yeah. <laughs> Lee Steckline gets the pass from Anne Renee Debian. They'll clear it out. 50 seconds remaining on the DeGeorge penalty. you got to think this is Adidas' moment to get things going in this third period. Amanda Kessel with speed over the blue line to Nurse. Send it back to Kessel. Amanda Kessel with time and space. Down low to Nurse. Trying to find Laura Stacy in front. Puck is bouncing. Kessel now down low. One-timer intended for Nurse just missed. He heard the crowd. They thought that would be a good one. Done. Down low to Nurse. Nurse will shoot it on net. It'll be tipped into the corner. Now Kessel back to Dunn. Dunn's going to shoot that one quick. Hits off of Skamura and misses the wide post. Three seconds and DeGeorge is coming out of the box now. One last chance for Dunn. And that one off the bar as Mickelson takes a shot close to the net. Nurse now in front of Debian. She'll cover up. A good power play again for Team Adidas, but nothing to show for it. Some great looks there, and you see Megan Mickelson jumping into the play, looking to go short side high. And sometimes just this team Adidas is just taking a few extra seconds with the puck, looking for that perfect shot because they know it has to be perfect to beat Enrique Zabien. Sometimes, you know, just tossing a puck on net maybe creates the scramble that they need. And Renee Debian, an incredible story. Left the game of hockey, didn't think there was a future for her. Took 18 months off. Said, I might come back. And is now an Olympic gold medalist. And arguably the best goaltender right now in the world. Yeah, she's certainly shown her cons consistency, especially over this PWHPA tour. You know, the Burger Bunch has relied heavily on her, giving up odd man rushes at times, breakaways, and she's just always up to the test. The nice and calm brings things back in front of Debian. Adidas will try to take advantage of a tired group, but Marie-Philippe Poulain is going to take the puck out of the zone. Sent back in quickly. Richards now with Harmon. Off the boards, they find Poulain. Poulain trying to get around O'Neill, runs into the referee instead, and they're offside. We'll get a face off in the neutral zone. We'll get a good look at the fans here in Collingwood. A big thank you to the Collingwood community and the Owen Sound community. It's been an incredible weekend of hockey and an incredible show of support. You can see here a sold out crowd once again. Four sold out games this weekend in Ontario. And a big shout out to the incredible volunteers who have been so kind to the staff and athletes of the PWHPA. And this one thing you like about coming to a small community is this response that we're getting. Yeah, they've been so welcoming. And as we mentioned earlier in the game, we were lucky enough to go to the Legion last night. And the volunteers here hosted the players and staff for, you know, a nice meal. They were so courteous and, you know, generous with their time and just vocalizing that they're so happy to have professional women's hockey here for their community. See it on the kids' faces. The lineup for the autograph sessions after the game is quite long, and you see a, a buildup of kids along the glass waiting for a fist bump from their favorite players as they come off the ice and into the player tunnel. And we have 11 minutes left in this Collingwood showcase before we say goodbye as Mickelson sends Poznikov into the boards. Yeah, a bit of a a bit of a difference in height and weight on that battle on the boards. Mickelson obviously just trying to slow Poznikov down and she takes the two minutes as she has a very casual, calm conversation with the linesman. <laughs> Alex Poznikov, of course, uh, I mentioned her earlier, but she played at the University of Alberta. And I just saw on the Twitter in between periods that uh, the FISU University at women's hockey has round up and uh, Team Canada coming away with gold. So we want to wish congratulations to those who competed for Team Canada for U Sport at the FISU U Winter Universiade 
in Lake Placid. That's a mouthful. It is. It really is. <laughs> but congratulations <laughs> to Team Canada as we saw Sarah Nurse blocking that shot from Emily Clark. They're now battling along the boards as Nurse takes down Eldridge and then she gets thrown down. Now Eldridge sending the puck over to Poulet on the far side. On the power play for a minute 22 is Mickelson. Goes off for interference. Poulet now inside the zone. Can't get around fast. We'll delay back to Harmon at the point. Now to Rattre. Rattre will take a shot. Quick toe save by Rooney. O'Neill trying to kill some time along the boards. Got help by Larocque. Watched closely by Eldridge and Clark. Stacy almost reached the blue line, but now Clark in the slot. It's going to turn back, settle things down for Team Harvey's on the power play. Gives it away to Laura Stacy. Stacy and O'Neill now trying to go in. Good heads up play there for O'Neill to stay on side. 30 seconds remaining as Poulet is going to send it back to Harmon and they'll go off for a change. Harmon waiting for that change to be completed before she starts the power play breakout. Finds DeGeorge on the near side. Gets around done, but stopped by Sonia. And now Nurse along the boards is going to clear that out. Sonia's going to pick it up in the neutral zone. Sonia runs into the lineswoman and not able to get that puck in deep. Five seconds remaining as Schaefer trying to get behind Dunn. Won't be successful. And now Nurse with the loose puck is going to wait for Mickelson out of the box. And they connect, but not quite. It's going to be an icing call. Little heads up play there from Sarah Nurse. As she had Jill Saulnier on the strong side, and I think the Harvey's D kind of drifted that way, thinking she was going to send her on the break. She knew that Mickelson was coming out of the box, and a good lead pass that was just out of reach for Mickelson on the break. Well, a tired group of Team Adidas players now on the ice, maybe taking advantage, will be Team Harvey's. Curio wins the draw back to Fortino. Now to Steckline on the far side. She takes a quick shot. That one's high and wide. Now Mickelson. Mickelson playing forward now because they couldn't get the change in. So she's a right winger on the ice. She's going to watch as Nurse battles for the puck. Comes away with it. DiGirolamo is going to regroup as the forwards go off for a change. The penalty killers... A little tired after that shift, and here comes Amanda Kessel. Kessel now on the far side. Has Potomac through the middle. They touch up with Greco, so the icing will be waved off. Debian telling Greco, send that puck long for Poulet, but Kessel's shot goes wide. Vespa keeps things alive for Team Adidas. Back to Larock. Larock. Below the goal line is hit into the boards. Just battling channel and Poulet is going to help out. Get the loose puck. They're stuck at the blue line. They'll be stopped by the team Adidas. D at the blue line and here comes Marie-Philippe Poulet. Long pass stopped by Kessel. O'Neill with pressure from Clark. He'll stay on side. Inside the zone, a penalty coming again against Team Harvey's. Yeah. They're getting their chances, Noxie. They are, and Kristen O'Neill again putting herself in a good position to draw penalties by taking that speed around their defense, cutting into the center. As uh, Jackie Greco will go to the box, you see her just try to lift that hand off her stick to kind of demonstrate to the officials it was unintentional, but nevertheless, the call stands for a trip. Jackie Greco, of course, a big Buffalo Bills fan, being from Buffalo herself. We saw her walk in today with her Bills game day fit along with Melissa Channel and Jamie Lee Rattray. So I know that uh, Bills Mafia will be happy that we give them the shout out here uh, on CBC. Everybody, I think, cheering for the Bills here today. We're getting a couple good go Bills from the booth here. Team Adidas calls a timeout. Try to draw something up on this power play. And cut the lead down to one. And we'll see. Maddie Rooney has been solid 
in net this third period. The shots now in favor of Team Adidas, 31 to 26. And we'll see what this last seven and a half minutes has in store for us. It's been an incredible weekend. We started with Scotiabank Hockey Day in Canada on Sportsnet in Owen Sound. And we're finishing off in Collingwood. Three games in Collingwood in total. And an incredible show from the fans. We'll see what Team Adidas has drawn up. LaRock to Nurse. Back to LaRock at the point. She shoots through traffic. Loose puck. Still loose. And nobody could bat that in behind Debian. LaRock diving on her knees to keep the puck inside. Now Stacy along the boards is battling for it. Kessel gets dropped by Skimura. And she's going to clear the puck down the ice, 130. As Nurse gets it in the neutral zone. Sarah Nurse, smooth as she sends it over to Laura Stacy, But Poulain is there to take the puck away. And it's cleared out by Kristen Richards. Rooney leaves it for LaRock. Got to get back inside the zone. The pass to Mickelson just a little too far behind, and Poulet's there to kill some time for Harvey's. As Clark joins her behind the net. They'll send it back to Richards at the point. She shoots, just misses wide. Now Sonia trying to clear it out. Perfect stick lift there by Poulet, but she'll get the puck back on the near side. Sonia with room. Jill Sonia. Toe drag and can't get the shot off. Savannah Harmon had a great stick. 40 seconds left on the power play. You can see the fatigue setting in for both teams here. And Jill Sonia able, able to find that step. A great chance there attempting the toe drag and just losing the handle at the end. Struggling to get around the Harvey's D is this Adidas power play. Done now, setting up behind Rooney. Go to Ponomac on the near side. She's watched closely by Skimmer. I'd also get rid of that puck quickly with her <laughs> watching me. And Steckline will send it down. That'll about do it. A great penalty kill by Team Harvey's. Not many threats there for Team Adidas. 5.35 remaining in the third period. We're back to five on five action. And the number one team once again proving why they are so dominating. The Rock at the point to Dunn. Dunn's going to take a shot. Tipped in front, still loose. And Debian will find the rebound. Again, what? great looks from Team Adidas. I mean, they're, they're putting pucks on net. They've got bodies in front. In front. <laughs> and uh, and Renee Debian has just been so solid at the backstop for Team Harvey's. We talked about how hard it is to score on Anne Renee Debian. So here's the question, Coach. We'll see the replay there. A nice stop by Debian. Great angle here. As O'Neill just tries to bat that one in behind her. At what time do you pull the goalie to score two on the best in between the pipes? Well, yesterday Team Adidas pulled at the three minute mark. So it would, it's not out of the realm of possibility for Matt Leitner to make that call. And, you know, if Adidas can maintain possession of the puck and keep it in zone, maybe even sooner. So we'll see and keep an eye on Maddie Rooney. Let's we'll see when. Team Adidas pulls her. 4.45 remaining in the third period. They need two goals to tie it. And they'll want to get at least a point if they can get to overtime to try and increase that lead over Team Scotiabank that had six points this weekend with two big wins. There are now 15 points in the standing to Team Adidas 16. Yeah, as you mentioned, every point matters. And getting even one point out of this game here would put a little bit more pressure on Scotiabank going into the next weekend. A little bit of a different point system that we have this season. So three points for a win, one point for an overtime loss, and two points for an overtime win. So a lot of opportunity to get some points and to steal some from Team Harvey's. Jess Jones now looking for a centering pass to Vespa. That's taken away by Steckline and now Skimura and Clark exchanging passes. Haley Skimura with a quick shot, toe save, loose in front, she gets it in. I thought it might have hit the post, but it hit the middle post in the net. And Haley Skimura, with her first today, gives Team Harvey's a three goal lead. Harvey's off the rush with Skimura and Emily.
Ashley Clark. They just find that next gear here. Nice little touch pass from Clark. Skimura puts the puck on net and a great effort from Megan Nicholson laying out to try to put her body on the line. And again, just one of those unfortunate bounces lands back on Haley Skimura's tape and she finds the back of the net. A big Haley Skimura fan. I've been since the beginning of the season, just a full 200 foot player, solid on her skates and stick. And she's able to bury that on her own rebound. And Harvey's right back at it in the offense, but Jocelyn LaRock is going to move it forward to Sonia. Sonia with speed now trying to get around Richards. There's a pass to LaRock. Couldn't get the shot off. Savannah Herman now. Loses the puck, gives it away to Sarah Nurse. Here's Sarah Nurse with the shot. That one goes high and wide as it's tipped by Richards. Larson. Trying to clear it, stopped by the point. Couple bodies going all over the place. And whistle comes at a time where we've got a little bit of pushing and shoving happening. I love to see it. Of course, uh, Karela Lamar always seems to find herself in these six sticky situations. And Laura Stacy coming off the bench just let her know that she wasn't a, a big fan of that stick that she got up on Kessel. Two players that, of course, train together in the Montreal region. But as we've seen here, when the jerseys are different colors, there's no love lost. That's probably one of the most frequent questions that I get from those who are curious about our travels with the PWHPA is just if the girls are, are actually friends off the ice. Um, and also, how do they go? I, one thing that comes to mind is a Hillary Knight, Marie-Philippe Poulain almost getting into a fist fight in the rivalry series game, but they are friends off the ice. Obviously, they do a lot of media together. They compete in the PWHPA, but these girls really have a way of turning it on and off. They're competitors on the ice, but respectful off the ice as well as friends. As Maddie Rooney has left the net, so 245, and Team Adidas is looking for three goals. And Jinsey Dunn's going to take the first shot from the point, stopped by Poznikov. Now Kessel back to DiGiralamo at the point. DiGiralamo back to Kessel. Former captain at Syracuse University. Has the most points for a defense at Syracuse. She'll take a shot from the point block by Demers, but she'll keep it in as she gloves that down at the blue line. Stacy now at the goal line. Cycles down low for Ponomac. Sarah Ponomac. Leaves it for Kessel at the hash marks. Kessel's going to send it in on net. Nurse is there, but she's tied up by Steckline. Cleared out to center ice. Deidre Alamo once again will glove that down and moves it forward to Potomac. 150 remaining. Net still empty for Team Adidas. Six on five. As Kessel didn't see that pass as she was trying to go off for a change. And the loose puck, and that's a post for... Jamie Lee Rattray is looking for the hat trick. She's hit two posts in the empty net. She's asking for it now, back door. And Kirsten O'Neill finally settles it down for Team Adidas. 120. They give it back to Jamie Lee Rattray. Gets the hat trick in Collingwood on her third attempt on net. Well, third time's a charm for Jamie Lee Rattray. And honestly, if she hit the crossbar, I was going to buy her a free burger because she just had her eyes on the prize, looking to seal off that hat trick in this final game here in Collingwood. And she does it from a distance at the top of the zone, sees the open net, and makes no mistake from 50 feet out of what she couldn't hit from four feet in. But <laughs> she gets her done. Geneviève Lacasse, too, just asked a little kid sitting beside her to give her the hat. She threw it on the ice, skated on the ice, picked it up, gave it back to the kid. So a little bit of fun on the Harvey's bench. It's now 5-1 lead for Team Harvey's. And a minute remaining in the final game of this Collingwood Showcase. A nice little memory for the fans as that one goes into the crowd. And Liz, we've had a lot of fun. Thanks once again to our fans. And a reminder again, we'll be back in Ontario February 10th weekend. So plan your Valentines around 
Peterborough, Niagara, Barrie, and Kitchener. And we'll see you either in person or on CBC Sports with myself and Liz Knox on the call. We're doing a little bit of traveling. Yes, and the PWHBA obviously wants to thank again hosts Owen Sound and Collingwood. We'd also like to congratulate you, Izzy, on your debut with the World Juniors, having that in-game call, calling the Connor Bedard goal in overtime. We know that we're just beginning to see your career flourish, and we're happy and proud to be a part of it. Well, thanks, Liz, and obviously a big part of that is, is getting to travel with these girls and an honor to do so, and we're happy to continue a successful season so far for the PWHPA as Eldridge is going to send that one down for the icing call. She's trying to hide. Yes, she is. <laughs> on the bench, but the referee caught her. She'll be sent back on the ice. No argument from Eldridge. 11 seconds remaining. We'll bring the face off to the right of Debian. She faced 31 shots, or sorry, 36 shots today. And is going to get another W for Team Harvey's. They're on a 10 game win streak. And that is why they are the number one team in the league. Team Harvey's takes this one five to one for Team Adidas. A thank you to Liz Knox, who is going to run down and do our player interview with our one of our three stars of the game, I'm sure. And a thank you to Team Adidas as well. A great game today. It's tight in the standings for second place. They'll hold on to 16 points, and Team Scotiabank, with two big wins this weekend, move up to 15 points in the standings. And Team Harvey's is going to run away with three more at 27 points. They are the lone holders of first place. So we hope you can join us for the OHL Showcase or our American friends. We'll see you in Tampa Bay and in Washington, D.C., and then keep an eye on our social media for any more showcase announcements. Fans, here's your, here are your three stars for this evening's game. Your third star from the Adidas team, Amanda Kessel. Your second star from the Harvey's team, and Renee Desbin. And your first star from the Harvey's team, Jamie Lee Rattray. So a final goodbye to the crowd here in Collingwood, your three stars of the game, Anne Renee Debian, Amanda Kessel, and your first star, Jamie Lee Rattray, will send it to ice level with Liz Knox. We're ringside with Jamie Lee Rattray, who sealed off the hat trick today after a couple posts from Insight. How does it feel to get the three here today? It was good. I mean, uh, I think we played a really solid game all the way through. and. Um, I think our line really just made it hard on them uh, all game, and I think that just rewarded us throughout the game, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and, you know, it's, it's always fun to win. The Burger Bunch continues their winning streak. You know, you guys have been able to put together some solid games. What do you think is going to be the biggest challenge heading into the second half leading into playoffs? I just, you know, I mean, teams are obviously know that we've won a lot of games, and they're going to try to adapt their games, but I think the one thing we've done well is just adapting our game and winning in different ways, right? We can win close games, we can win, you know, bigger games, and I think, uh, honestly, we just got to keep playing the way we are, and we'll be in good shape. And finally, a sold-out arena here in Collingwood. The fans were fantastic. We want to thank everybody. What do you have to say to the community here? Thanks, everybody, for coming out, and it made uh, one heck of a weekend here, so thank you.
Again, thank you so much to Collingwood from the PWHBA and Scotiabank for Hockey Day in Canada and all of you who made it happen. We'll see you on tour. All right, a big thank you again to Liz Knox and a hat trick today for Jamie Lee Rautra, your first star of the game. On behalf of Liz Knox, myself, and our production crew, we thank you so much for joining us on CBC Sports. We'll see you February 10th in Ontario again from Collingwood, Ontario. Have a good night. You've been watching the Secret Dream Gap Tour.